in harsh conditions is where special forces training lives. Whether day, night, above the surface, or below, these National Guard Green Berets take their combat diver skills to entirely new depths. I got a chance to go up here to Naval Station Mayport in Jacksonville, Florida. It's a great location because of the way the Atlantic Ocean comes right up to the edge here. Uh, you've got great surf, you've got zero visibility in the water, which is great. If you're going to train, train in one of the hardest possible locations right now. But arriving at a landing zone accurately and hopping on a Coast Guard response boat to get to a training location requires planning. It's all about relationships and building relationships out here with us, especially in the Guard side of the house. Um, so we got the Dragons from 7th Group. Uh, we've worked with Florida Guard Aviation. We've got NAS Naval Station Mayport here. We've got the Coast Guard we use with those two. And we also got the more aviation pieces out there. Uh, EOD was a big supporter on that side too. We use their facilities uh, for the planning bays and they also assisted on some of the dive operations. And we, we hear it often said that, hey, you know, the Guard SF are the best at UW, unconventional warfare, just because of the relationships we have across the board with federal, local law enforcement any kind of government agency out here. So for us, it's to maintain that piece and to push that piece even further. Appreciate it. Yep. Thank you. Yeah, we appreciate you guys. Thank you. Having the Army National Guard out here, you don't get to see this often. You really don't. Having the Special Forces team there and just seeing how they work, it's definitely a different change of pace. Seeing that's a different branch, it's a different aircraft, something we don't get to encounter all the time. So being able to see a different kind of aircraft, helicopter, up close in person and actually experiencing directing it, it's, it's a great experience. It just goes to show you that we're all one team. No matter what's going on in the world, we work together so then we contribute to one big plan. So me being here is really inspiring because I know that I helped out getting them ready to what they're going to do next. We'd like to work with the 20th Special Forces Group again. It was kind of a, a big takeaway with me just to see, um, to see the National Guard in action. You know, this was, this was our first time working with the team. From the brief and from the get-go, from the gear up and then the entry into the water, uh, it was all kind of a valuable lesson for us. It was also a, a great learning curve for my guys, uh, to, you know, because some of my crew has never worked with divers. So this was great for them to, to see the gear, to see what, you know, what equipment uh, you guys would be carrying. So if, you know, if we're ever working in a, in a search and rescue type case uh, with a dive boat, you know, we're, we're, we're a little bit more familiar with you know, what the diver's gonna have with them and, and what the proper procedures would be for, for water entry or uh, bringing them back onto the boat. They maintain their certifications for their dives. Uh, that's the biggest thing right now, because uh, yearly you gotta maintain a certain amount of dives as a combat diver, so they keep up on that status right there. So it, it keeps them, Right now is the whole point of it is being ready, reliable, and relevant, you know. And so they're ready right now, they're reliable, and they're relevant this time because the dive operations, they're ready to go. They've, they've checked that block, is what I call it. Uh, so they're able to conduct operations, water operations anywhere in the world, doing helicast operations, the Drager and the Zodiacs, and so forth like that. So what kind of individual becomes a National Guard Green Beret? I got guys who are doctors, lawyers, I got guys who are PAs. You know, he's an E7, but he's a doctor on the outside, you know. Um, I got multiple guys like that, you know, Ivy League schools, you know, you got guys, they want to be a team guy when they're here, be that E6, E7, be a team guy, and then when they go back, they're a doctor and so forth in the outside world. But that's what really makes that ODA unconventional warfare. That's why it's so important, the different mindsets they have and different capabilities they bring to the fight when it comes to that team. Um, but just being in a special operations community, you know, I wouldn't be anywhere else. I love the mentality and the people in it. But the greatest thing that brings me back is the men, you know, the people that, you know, we surround ourselves with. Uh, it's amazing to come back and talk with them and have the same kind of goal and push and drive. It's awesome to be around that. You know, when these, some of these guys right now, that if they come to drill, it's like, you know what, every time I come to drill, how do I improve the team? How do I improve myself? How do I make it that I deserve to be on this team every time I come here? And I love that stuff. You know, and it's, it's, it's important to me to be around those guys and keep them going. Reporting from Naval Station Mayport, for National Guard Bureau Public Affairs, I'm Army Staff Sergeant Adam Fishman.